Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Basaurus coming at you with another absolutely fire episode of the Basaurus Show. On today's episode, we're going to be fitting a new starter mower to the E36. <laughs> Intro! <laughs> Okay, so as you've seen in previous videos, um, my starter motor does not work very well. Now, Euro Car Parts on the weekend were doing a discount code. Surprise, surprise. Um, so yeah, I decided, well, I'll buy a starter motor um, and I got 20% off. I went for an RTX one, which was £55. Now you may be thinking, Ben, why did you not get the Bosch one? Well, you must be in Saint, if you think I can afford a Bosch starter motor, no. They were about 250 quid, whereas this one, a lot less. So I just thought, fuck it, I'll get a cheap one. I don't drive the car a lot, it's not a daily, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, just got a bit sick of bump starting it and worrying whether it'll start on each time. So yeah, bought this one. Let's go. Um, so there's a few ways you can change a starter motor. Um, you can do it by leaving the manifold in there. Um, however, I can't be bothered to jack the car up and fiddle around for, age, for ages. Um, and with me not actually driving the car for a while, um, I'm just going to take the manifold off. Because um, in the long run it does make it easier. So it's not the easiest thing to see. I've got my phone light on there because it's dark. But that is the starter motor there where you've got the big red cable going to. So yeah, we need to take this manifold off to get to it. We've taken the manifold off, you're going to want to remove the throttle body, um, take the fuel rail and injectors out, and then there's two 10mm bolts either side holding it in, you can see there's those struts that come from the block. Well, you can't really see it, but anyway, there's they come from the block and up to the bottom of the manifold, and then you have, I think, seven nuts that hold the manifold in uh, onto the head. Annoyingly, I've got engine razors on mine, so it makes it a lot harder. I have to end up taking all of this out to reach the last one, I think. And yeah, and then there's a few other little pipes that you have to disconnect. Before I take the throttle body off, what I'm going to do is disconnect the mat, like that. And then I'm going to take the intake elbow off uh, from here. It gives you access a bit better to the bolts holding the throttle body in. And also you can put this to one side um, so you've got more room. So while I'm doing this, uh, you guys might as well go and hit that like uh, button and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel, it would be much appreciated. So what you're going to need is a 10mm socket um, and yeah, for these four bolts on the throttle body. Cool, yeah, so I'm gonna have to take out this part with the loom and the bit here, whatever you call it. Um, now, if you know me, you know I'm a fucking idiot. Um, nah, nah. If you know me, I, when I put the engine back in, I had quite a few troubles, so I've actually had to take this in and out quite a few times because I've had to take the manifold off and put it back on quite a few times, so I really can't be bothered to do this again, um, but, you know, needs must and I've got to do it, so. So I'm just using a little flat head to release a little bit of the uh, attention uh, around the pipe, just very gently in there, because you obviously don't want to damage the pipe. There we are. And should have got a cup for all that fuel. Okay, so the fuel rail is disconnected here at the front, so it flaps back nicely. Um, and what it's time to do now is to get these nuts out of here um, that hold the manifold out. Um, they are 11mm. Um, you do want to be careful with 
getting these out because they can fall out the socket quite easily and you will lose them down in the engine bay area. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you a little trick actually which makes it a lot easier to get these bad boys out. First you'll need some kitchen roll. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is tear a bit off like so and then you're literally just gonna to wanna to put it over the socket like that and then get it down there and put it up on the nut. And what that will do is provide a bit of friction and force in between the socket and nut. There you are, it will come out like that. Obviously, um, try not to get fuel all over it, but yeah, it sits in there quite nicely, helps wedge it, and it pulls out pretty easily when you need it to. Right, so I've taken all the nuts out, um, it's, so it's time to remove the manifold. Now this is an M50 engine, so it's got the M50 manifold. Now I can't remember if it's the same for the M52 engine, I haven't owned one of those in, in quite a few years. Um, but there is a pipe for the idle control valve, which will plug into the manifold at the back here. Um, and you just pull that out and then once you pull the manifold off there's another breather I think I think it's a breather for the fuel rail which plugs into the manifold here and connects up to the fuel rail there So when you pull the manifold off it will be exposed and I think that just pulls out again um, I'm not sure we'll see in a sec though Ah uh, yeah, and there's a plug as well there. Yeah, and that's the breather so just pull that out and your manifold should come out like that. Now, while you have got your manifold off, it leaves your valves um, exposed. So what you're definitely gonna wanna do, get some more kitchen roll and just put those, put those just in there to stop any sort of dirt or anything like that getting into them. Um, because when you get dirt into your valves, it is not good. Especially if you're like me and you've just rebuilt your engine about two months ago. Now. You may be wondering, well Ben, if you've uh, rebuilt your engine two months ago, why are you now putting another starter motor in it? Well, referring to uh, earlier, I'm a f***ing idiot. Um, and basically I wanted to rush it and get it back together um, for show season and drift season. But now, uh, COVID-19's come along and ruined all of that. So I sort of rushed putting my car back together for no reason. So, you know. Uh, it's not that great to see, but this is the starter motor here. Um, now, it should be, and I say should be, because mine isn't, because I'm lazy, it should be held in by three bolts here. I have two in, one there and one there, and I don't have one in here. Um, I'm not the only person does it, it's quite a common thing, so if you've ever bought an E36 and someone's already replaced the clutch in it, um, you'll probably find that the top bolts on the gearbox haven't been put back in. Now I did my clutch on this oh well over a year ago. I uh, have driven it a lot, done drift days, well a drift day, um, a hill climb and a few other sort of track things and it's been okay, it hasn't come apart or anything like that. Uh, now I'm not suggesting that you leave it out, um, but if you don't want to, then don't put it back in, um, but don't, do not blame me for that because um, that's down to your own will. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the wires off the back. You've got a 13mm here, um, which disconnected these two big wires. Then you have a, what I think is an 8mm behind it for a little wire, and then another one down the bottom, which I think is also another 8mm. Um, before you take them off, it is a good idea just to take a picture, just so you know where they all go. Um, yeah. Now the bottom one has a little plastic cover on it um, and I've just used a small screwdriver just to pry that off. So yeah, and that one at the bottom is a 10 mil. Don't know why they have to do it all different sizes. Yeah, uh, so going back to what I said earlier, that one in the middle isn't actually a bolt. Uh, that is actually just like a locating pin. Um, so I actually only have one bolt holding it in the front and it's still been okay. Um, so yeah, time to remove these bolts now and get the star motor out. So guys, the nut is a 16 mil 
and then the um, the bolt for it is actually a Torx, but I can't remember what size it is. But like I said, I can't be bothered to go under the car uh, and jack the car up and go under it. So what I'm using instead is a stubby 10 mil, um, a stubby 10 mil uh, Rolson's finest, um, which actually if you use that end um, with the teethy bit, the closed end. Um, it does actually grip it enough to undo it. Um, I think I'll probably use that enough so I can probably just hold that by hand. Yeah, so it's quite fiddly. Um, but yeah, you can do it without having to jack the car up, which is quite nice. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Inverted Torx bit with a 16mm nut on it. Okay, so the next bolt that we need to undo is na -na -na -na, that, damn it, is, I don't know why I'm using a magnetic thing for this, um, that one there that you can see. So we need to undo that, and that will, which is mounted to the block, and that will just pull that whole mount out, um, and the starter motor should just slide out nicely, hopefully. Hopefully. Now to get to this bolt, it wasn't quite a straight line because there's a few things in the way. So obviously I've used extensions, but I've also used one of the uh, these wobbly bits um, to help just get. It. I only needed the tiniest bit of angle on it to get in there, um, and it worked. So now, with a little bit of wiggling and persuasion, this should slide out. Come on, start my motor, you're embarrassing me. There you go, we find a way, and it comes out. There's the old one. Genuine BMW one, and I'm replacing it with an RTX one. So, yeah, as you can see, what we need to do is take this mount off, put it on the old one, um, and then just put it all back together, really. One thing you're also going to want to do is um, swap these bolts over. So my start, uh, my new one came with bolts like these, just with a nut on the end, um, and they just go into the end like that. Uh, whereas on this one, they are a still a bolt but they've got the thread they've got thread on the end with a, a nut in there use these space a bits here and they will uh, help help mount it to this a bit better give it a bit more strength um, so yeah just make sure you swap those over all right so it's time to put a new starter motor back in uh, what you want to do is make sure there's all the all the wires and cables and pipes and that sort of out of the way as much as possible so you don't end up crushing them or damaging them uh, in any way um, so yeah, it's just a case of wiggling it back in, sort of finding the right route. Probably best to go in the same way you came out, um, which I think was this I did this way. Yes. There's something I was also just like to point out. I've just had to take the start motor back out because it turns out the RTX ones are actually um, they're a little bit shorter in length. And what I've done is as you can sort of see, is just cut the hole open on the back of the mount just so that the bolt that attaches it to the block um, can go in, it'll push it and hold it down a little bit. Uh, kind of makes sense, you know, buy cheap and you, you have loads of problems with it. Alright, sweet, so that is the new starter motor all in. Uh, now it's just time to get all the rest of it back together. Okay, so now that you've got everything back together, um, and check that everything is done up and you have got everything back together and it's all done up nice and tight it is time to turn it on obviously uh, disconnected the fuel system so you're going to want to let the uh, fuel pump primer up quickly um, just by turning it to the second position on the key um, and then that way it won't have a jolty start So that's it for this episode. Uh, make sure you like the video and if you haven't already, please uh, do subscribe um, and I'll catch you on the next one.